Here we go. Strategic Command World War II, World at War. The invasion of Japan has begun. Boom! Here we go. This has been a long, long game. Holy cow. Well, let's see what the Japanese are going to do now. Oh, it's freak out time. For, oh, they were able to get a whole army to up to full strength up there. Just for getting an idea of what's going on in Tokyo area. Wow, that's it. Okay. He hit me with his kamika kamikazes. Hmm. All right. Well, he was unable to. These units can't move. What's going on? Oh, he conceded? Oh, man. It's over. The war is over. The war is over. We've won. Woo! After the Japanese or the U.S. invasion, sorry, he didn't get to see the U.S. invasion because I failed to record um, that episode. But this is the end of the war. Wow, that um, the U.S. forces were able to invade uh, northern Japan. Here, uh, I had transports. The northern crossing here that I had done uh, conducted. And the idea here with the Northern Crossing was we had done a, basically what we had done was this India operation and operation into the south, well, southwest of Japan, but in Southeast Asia. And here and here was to draw as much of the Japanese forces down here, especially their naval power down here, so that we could, and then we also engaged him here in Hawaii and here as much as possible to draw as much of his naval power here and here and then we shot straight across the Atlantic he did not detect our forces I don't think um, we did engage him here north of Hawaii with a destroyer force we screened as best as we could this movement and then landed in northern Japan um Soviets obviously attacking into northern, um, this, this force here was, was looking like it was starting to break through. The Germans knocked out of the war. Um, wow, what a game. I wish I could keep playing it. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Uh, there were times when I was playing this game when I didn't want to play it anymore. Because <laughs> he was beating me. And it was like I dreaded the turns. It was like, okay, how am I going to hold on? And more than anything, it was about trying to hold on in China. And that's the thing about uh, Strategic Command World War II. This, this game is global in scope. And you have to keep in mind that you can lose um, on one end of the, the battle, uh, on the, on the um, one end of the game, and be winning elsewhere. What's amazing here is how many units Japan had but look what he's got to stop us. He just doesn't have a lot on the board. And I thought he had a lot more. Look at he's got an... Um, look how close these forces are. Wow, crazy. And he was just... He was getting worn out here. Um...
added another core here as a spoiling. He kept launching spoiling attacks. Look at the force the Russians were able to bring to bear to the Soviets. In retrospect, look at how huge that force is. It's gigantic. Wow, he just didn't have much to stop me at that point. I was kind of looking forward to the campaign in Japan. Um, and I think, you know, maybe it he held out. Boy, I don't know. We're, we're pushing in to northern Japan. And we had, I was getting excited because we had tanks and three armies. There's a headquarters here. Um, these are mostly tanks and armies. I mean, these are. this has got a lot of punch. Mechanized units and armies and airborne. I mean, this force is just really well designed. And this is this is a decoy unit. It's a garrison. Um, this is basically a decoy so that if his, to, to use as a scout unit. But this, this force here is basically designed to just hammer down the... And I was worried about this little bottleneck here, which is why I, I lot, you know, I was, and I was also worried about the fleet getting caught in the, um, because I didn't think his fleet was as damaged as it was. I mean, he really didn't have much left. It's amazing how well he did. I mean, I thought he had infantry here. Nothing. Wake, I thought he had something there. Nothing. And he would talk. Nothing. Wait, Midway, nothing. Uh, how about Saipan? Nope, nothing there. How about um, Iwo? Not a soul. Oki? Nope. Saipan? Taipei? Nope. It's just nothing. He didn't have much in Philippines. He just didn't have much left. And these are all just garrisons. I mean, he just basically was like, I'll hold on to as much of China as I can. This was his main army here. Kudos to him. Great game. Um, and the Russians were just, the Soviets, I mean, they're just, it's a matter of time before they blast through here and get Seoul. And the problem was, as I was bottle bottlenecked here, because they had lack of supplies, because I didn't have enough HQs, and now I had dropped another HQ here another here and they were soon to have another and that would have been the you know the end the end was was near hmm just looking over what he had this is uh, strategic bombers fighters might have been fun having a Goddardammerung in Japan I really wanted to get my heavy bombers here and here over to um, get into Japan proper and just bomb Tokyo. Tokyo was never bombed. None of these cities were ever bombed. I never did island hopping. Um, ultimately, just kind of a strategy overview, the way the war went was uh, the Japanese took um, Midway, or they took Hawaii. They, att they attempted to take Hawaii. They failed. Um, the Germans drove into the Soviet Union and, and did not, and they got into Crimea, and that's about as far as they ever got. Um, the British forces, Commonwealth forces, struggled to take, to kick the Germans out of Africa. They didn't get the Germans and Italians out of Africa until 44. Um, but what happened was the American um, forces, rather than going to Africa, went to Norway. And we fought a long, protracted campaign in Norway. And eventually Sweden was brought into the war. Um, so there was a campaign in this northern area here, and even an invasion here. But what ended up happening was, uh, I eventually sh was beginning to give up on the Norway campaign. And in early 44, I started shifting some American forces towards Africa. 
and then there was a breakthrough in Africa. And right when I was about ready to give up in Norway, the Germans made one mistake, and we took Oslo, and that turned the entire... And I, I will tell you, Oslo was the basically the Stalingrad of the game. Um, once Oslo fell, the game complexion changed. And then suddenly we had Norway. And then when Sweden entered the war, I thought this was bad too. But, but then we took Sweden. And now we've had this massive base of operation here in the north, which we fed troops. There was never a D-Day. The Allies never attacked into, north, into, into France. Um, there was never an island hopping campaign. The Allies instead took Africa and then launched an attack into one of the, uh, there was partisan activity here on, and they took a port and we immediately launched forces attacking over here. So Africa falls, Italy gets the the um, the big hit um, morale wise. Then we land into I think it was Albania. The um, when that occurred, another huge morale hit for. Sorry, I'm probably in the wrong wrong place. Um, was it Split or Dubrovnik? Yugoslavia. Sorry. Um. Well, we landed in one of these two places. I don't think we were in Tirana. Um, we landed in one of these two two places. Secured both these ports. And then eventually got Chirania, and, and then eventually um, this port. And what happened was this was a big morale loss to Italy. And then I counted the Italian units, and I realized he did not have enough units to cover all his ports. And I thought, you know what, maybe Naples is open. And I landed an infantry unit right here near Monte Cassino. And he only had a garrison here. And the morale loss from landing troops so close to Rome caused Italy to collapse. And that was the beginning of the end. Within a turn, I think I had 15 or 16 U.S. units in Italy. I mean, we immediately invaded it, faster than the Germans could get units in here to secure it. We were in Germany within two turns after that, uh, trying to break into Innsbruck. That's when we eventually uh, started engaging. Um, and, and then suddenly the game broke open. That's when in the um, east the Soviets started breaking through. It was this chain reaction of events. Once And then once Germany fell, Japan, who had looked completely unbeatable, um, we uh, immediately, once we once once it was clear that there was no more naval forces here to, to deal with, I just started shifting naval forces to here. I then moved the U.S. For naval forces over to here. And the problem was is these forces were very weak. And I did a very poor job of understanding how to use the carriers and I didn't even know that you can change the carriers from fighters to bombers, which makes them way more effective. Um, so I did a very poor job of using American carriers early in the game. And I didn't even learn until late 44 how to use the American carriers properly. So learn that one in the game. Um, very valuable. Also, learning how to shift money and convoys is very valuable. Um, but I had a huge naval force over here. And the Japanese came over and just pummeled us. And I kept bringing over more naval units, shifted some units, and you can see here this little pipeline of naval units coming this way into the Pacific, feeding over towards this way. Um, the Americans were making so much money per turn that I, and as 45 came and Germany was collapsing, I began to set up enough money and plan for an April campaign where I had a bunch of destroyers being built all at once. And then uh, I had I, I began putting American forces on long-range transports. And that's when the genesis of the, uh, the long punch here came um, into my mind. And um, my thought was by April of 45, we would be able to launch across the Pacific and go for a knockout punch against Japan. And the plan was to hit Japan somewhere. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be in northern Japan or it was going to be down here. But I was going to go for a knockout punch. Um, in retrospect, <laughs> this might have actually worked. 
The sea naval landing forces are awful hard to take out. But there's just no good port here. I wanted at least two good ports. And with this force here, that would have been gone. That would have been gone. That would have been gone. And this port would have fallen. And I would be bringing in, um, with this space, I would have the heavy bombers here and more units pouring in. And these units would have a supply problem um, on their hands. And so this area is going to get secured. And I'm going to be bringing in forces to feed down the peninsula as fast, well, the island as fast as I can. Um, it might be a long fight. I don't know. He might have been able to last the rest of the game. But, um, yeah, he's a great opponent. He's, I mean, he had, I made some, like I said, there were times I was playing this game, I was like, oh, this guy's got me on the ropes. Um, I really thought he was going to break through in the East, in the Soviet Union, and I thought he was going to break through. I didn't think I could. The West, I really struggled with the Americans and with the British. And uh, the one thing I did consistently was build up the Americans. Um, eventually, this destroyer force, um, this long punch force, uh, in the end, was the game winner. It was awesome. So let's take a look um, at the statistics at the end. United States end up having 91 military units, Soviet 77, UK 59, French were up to 10, China with 7. I mean, he kicked China's butt. I mean, he crushed China. India 12, Japan 65 still. Still a significant force here. Japan still has 16 naval ships. The USA only has 39. But 39 plus 26, I mean, we're talking 65. 66, 67, 68. So they're overwhelming, the outnumbered. These forces would have been all good in Japan. Maybe pulling them back to Japan might have worked. I don't know. Let's take a look at lot. Let's take a look at losses. Wow. I'm shocked at this number here. 139 units Germany. 128 Russia. So. USSR, Soviets. And then Italy, 27. 54 China, 69 Japan. And this is mostly where these forces lost units. I would say this was almost one-to-one. -one. India, 23. Well, India lost. You know. Ultimately, the Germans outfought everybody as they did historically. The naval game... The Allies won fairly handily. Air, Allies won, I would say handily. 6, 8, 9, 10, 11 to 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, yeah. Look at the losses. 182. Germany suffered. 137. Soviets end up suffering less losses. Overall, though, the Allies suffer more losses than the Axis totally. Um, you know, by not a substantial margin, but a but a a, a big margin. Yeah, but you got to keep in mind Poland. Poland and I mean Poland, they're just rolling through them five. And 22, just 27 units, basically. So if you take away Poland and France, which are the beginning of the game where they just roll in through, that's a 27-unit spot. It's pretty even. Even game. Um, and then the numbers economically are just crazy. Um, graphs. MPPs. Whew. Japan's MPP numbers. Um, what are they collecting? They're bringing in 400, 300 and some a turn. Okay. USA is bringing in over 1,500 a turn. 57,000 spent, 48,000 spent. 29,000 lost. Yeah. Look at that. Lost. They, look at the end of the war. Oh my god. Look at this. 
down to nothing. Unbelievable. And the most Germany ever made was in the sixes and sevens. Wow. Italy. Yeah, it's got to be hard. I mean, USA is just raking it in. Look at that. That's just... Look at Britain. I mean, Britain is... Look at early war. They're just getting pummeled here in 41. Wow. Not much strategic bombing going on at all with the Allies. Axis, they used it. I did not. I should probably learn how to do that. Plunder. Um, let's see what Russia's MPPs look like. Yeah, it's just a stred steady stream up to 950 at the end of the game. And, you know, they lost 63 and, and spent 41. So they lost more than they spent. China. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Just down, down, down until they're destroyed. Look at this. Lost units. Man, that's crazy. Japan. Japan was doing great. Right up to the end. And then it just went... What a game. Well, I think that about sums it up. I don't think I have much more to review here. India. Let's see what India did. Yeah, I mean, they had steady MPPs the whole game. They had losses, big losses, and then they had some good exp expenditures. Towards the end, they were spending a lot, not losing a lot. Um... Yeah, I would say um, as the Allies, it could have been a lot of things better. Planning better with the US USA with their Navy. Using the carriers better. Um, going after these islands here, um, I tried to, and I just did not do a very good job. He actually took them back. I took this island and this island, and he took them back um, because I didn't know how to keep them supplied. And I think rather than doing that, it might have, you know... I think doing the old Guadalcanal. And I even, I think I owned Guadalcanal too in this game. Um, he took Guadalcanal, Borneo. I mean, he did some damage. Got to give him credit. And I was, you know, I was moving all these here to just start hammering his ships. What a great game. This is fun. Strategic Command is really quickly becoming an absolute mainstay in my gaming um, it's just a great great game um, really follows the spirit of World War two historically it follows World War two I've got a um, strategic command World War one game going on right now I'm not putting it on my YouTube channel um, but I knocked Russia out in 15 or in 16 1916 I, I knocked the Soviets out or the Russians out they became the Soviets but I can't I couldn't penetrate into France at all and I still can't or Italy for that matter um, and I don't know how to how to knock through their defenses and um, I've been you know beating on the uh, the allies or the Entente's navy um, and I can't like I've got the British bottled up in Egypt but I can't I can't win it's really frustrating um, the only way I know to win is by trying to destroy their navy to get the morale wins this game, you know, the Chinese are pushed. Jeez, look how far back they're pushed. It's unbelievable. Um, anyways, um, if you've watched part of this series, I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I want to thank my opponent for playing and sticking with us over the months that we've been playing it. It sure has been a lot of fun, and I want to thank him for being so consistent in his turn play that every day when I turn turn to take a look at this game at a specific time, his turns are already turned in, and um, being such a generous player... I sure have enjoyed playing this game, as I've said numerous times, and it's been mentally challenging, mentally tough, and that's the way a good war game should be. If your war game that you're playing makes you go through a plethora of emotions and makes you learn things about how logistics should work and you make tons of mistakes and you learn from them, then it's a good war game. And in this game, I certainly did that. You can see several instances in this game where my play was extremely sloppy and um, 
my deployment of forces was just pell-mell and very poor. But in the end, good overall strategy will pay off. And I think that's what we had. So thanks a lot for watching this series. I've sure enjoyed making it. I hope um, that if you like this content, you like and subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.